We continue our study of statutory preclusion of judicial review of agency action. Although there is a presumption in favor of judicial review, Congress may by statute declare that judicial review of agency action is not to be had, either at all or not at the behest of certain aggrieved parties. Before a court will declare that it is precluded by statute from reviewing an otherwise reviewable agency action, it will want to see clear and convincing evidence that that preclusion was intended by Congress. A court is less likely to find that kind of evidence if preclusion would raise a serious constitutional question about the respective powers of the judicial and the legislative branches. Now we turn to a case not involving any serious constitutional question, Block versus Community Nutrition Institute. The plaintiffs represent consumers who were aggrieved by price supports for milk. Minimum milk prices are set by the Secretary of Agriculture under a statute that goes back to 1906. The agency action challenged is the Secretary's milk marketing order that, in effect, raises the price consumers must pay for reconstituted milk. The consumers claim that the Secretary's action is contrary to the governing statute. On the way to the Supreme Court, the milk handlers, or processors, who had joined with the consumers and consumer group in bringing suit, were dismissed. The lower court held that the handlers had failed to exhaust a remedy within the agency, and we will come back to the issue of exhaustion requirements. The lower court also held that the consumers had standing to seek judicial review. Standing is another topic that lies ahead for us. The issue for decision before the Supreme Court was whether the consumers and consumer group were precluded by statute from getting judicial review of the agency action. Let's look at the statute. As always in administrative law, we want to be clear from the get-go about what action by the agency is at issue and what statute or statutes bear upon it. The Agricultural Marketing and Agreement Act provides A. Any handler subject to an order may file a written petition with the Secretary of Agriculture stating that any such order or any provision of such order or any obligation imposed in connection therewith is not in accordance with law and praying for a modification thereof or to be exempted therefrom. The purpose of the statute was to fix prices at a level high enough to keep milk producers happy. But prices set that way could make milk handlers, those who further process and distribute milk, unhappy and also make the ultimate consumers unhappy. The statute provides that handlers may petition the secretary to lower the set price. If dissatisfied with the secretary's ruling on the administrative petition, the handler may seek judicial review of such ruling in the appropriate district court. The handlers were dismissed from the suit because they had failed to exhaust the remedy provided in Section A. The consumers were not provided a right to petition the secretary, and so they were not dismissed. The secretary argues that Section B precludes the consumer parties. But Section B does not even refer to consumers. It speaks only of the handlers. How can expressly giving something to the handlers take something away from the consumers? The answer is found by applying a canon of statutory construction. Expressio unius est exclusio alterius, which in English means including one excludes others. The Supreme Court determines that by requiring the handlers to exhaust a remedy within the agency before just seeking judicial review, Congress signaled its intention to preclude consumers from getting judicial review at all. The structure of the statute and the fact that the handlers could push for the lower prices consumers want showed by 
clear and convincing evidence that Congress meant to preclude consumers from getting judicial review. You might ask, why not read into the statute a consumer right to petition the secretary and a requirement that consumers do so as a condition they must satisfy before seeking judicial review? Surely an exhaustion requirement is a less drastic curtailment of consumer rights than preclusion. Let us come back to exhaustion. The lesson of Block is that clear and convincing evidence of congressional intent need not take the form of a clear and direct statement of intent. The presumption of judicial review is overcome whenever the congressional intent to preclude judicial review is fairly discernible in the statutory scheme. Let's turn now to another case and see what we can discern there. In Block v. Michigan Academy, the lower courts had held for non-board certified family physicians on the ground that paying them less under Medicare Part B was contrary to the statute. Bowen, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, contests only the lower court's refusal to dismiss on preclusion grounds. This is a Medicare Part B case, but to make the statutory preclusion argument, the agency points to language in Medicare Part A. Part A expressly provides aggrieved individuals with a right to judicial review but all that Part B provides is a right to a fair hearing before the carrier. Part B says nothing about judicial review, and this is a Part B case. Including one excludes the other, right? Not so simple. Not even after the court acknowledges that in U.S. versus Erica, it had already held that judicial review of provider appeals of amount determinations is precluded. The Bowen Court distinguishes appeals of amount calculations, which Congress could not have meant to trouble the courts with, from challenges to the legality of the method fixed by the agency to determine how amounts are to be calculated. Despite Block versus Community Nutrition, and U.S. versus Erica, the court allows the non-board certified physicians to keep their victory that they won in the lower courts. The presumption favoring judicial review is strong. <laughs>